guys, welcome back to your 18th tutorial. Shh, shh, close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes and imagine that you're making a computer program. And imagine that you're making a computer program where the user has to enter a name of a girl, like Taylor, or Natalie, or Ashley, or Rebecca. And depending on what name they enter, it gives them a custom response, like, ooh, you love Natalie, or Ashley likes you too, or something like that. So let's go ahead and try to make this. Well, the first thing we need is a variable named, we'll just name it girl, and we'll set it equal to, um, set it, Natalie, since Natalie Portman is my dream girl. And now, in order to make this program, you might be thinking this. With the tools we have so far, we'll just go ahead and write if girl is equal to Natalie, and then we can go ahead and do our thing, and then li later we can write if girl is equal to Emily, if girl is equal to Hannah, if girl is equal to Reese, and we can go ahead and list all the girls that they could enter and do it that way. But a lot of if statements get kind of messy, so there is an easier way to make kind of this same program type. Instead of using a bunch of if statements, you can use a something called a switch statement. A switch statement takes one variable, which is the girl in this case, and it tests them for all the possible scenarios. And it's, you know, it's basically the same as writing a bunch of if statements, but it's just a much more organized way. So let's go ahead and let me show you the syntax for this is actually switch just like that. And right after it, you write the name of the variable. You only write the name of the variable, nothing else. You don't set it equal to anything, just that. Now I'll go ahead and make a body and give you some space. And now for each case scenario, we're going to call it a case. Now for the first case, um, you give it the value of what it can be equal to. For example, in the case of Natalie, and go ahead and add a colon, not a semicolon, just go ahead and add a colon. And now you write something like this. If girl is equal to Natalie, then go ahead and write whatever you want to do. Document, write, um, you must like Garden State because that's my favorite movie with Natalie Portman, believe it or not. And then after every after you're done executing the code, you go ahead and write the word break, and I'll tell you why later. So now we already have a case scenario for Natalie, and this is basically the syntax of what we're going to do for all the case scenarios. So let's go ahead and copy that. Copy, paste, in the case of Ashley, since I like Ashley Green too, be like, ooh, fan of Twilight, eh? With a question mark and we keep doing that for each girl so I'm only going to do two girls now but if you did a hundred a thousand a million it's going to be the same syntax you write your switch in the variable that you want to test and in the body write case with a colon the code with a semicolon and break at the end now I guess I can do this the reason that you have break is this say you have a list of like 50 girls well it's gonna test this one and then it's gonna test this one and then it's gonna text the next 48 and test them all until it gets to the answer well check this out since our girl is equal to Natalie right now what break means is this as soon as I get to this and I find an answer or find a value that that variable equals then there's no need to test the rest of these so I'm just gonna break out of it right now and go to right to the end so if you have like Natalie Ashley Brittany Emily as soon as it gets to Natalie it's gonna say alright I found my match I'm gonna break if you didn't have that break it's gonna go continue testing the rest of your stuff and it's just gonna cause a mess why would you want to make your computer test the rest of your answers when you already found your answer it doesn't make sense so that's what that little break uh, word means so you're saying alright let's go ahead and run this by default and see what we like you must like garden state alright so as predicted this program worked perfectly but what if we have a name like Emily and we go ahead and save this and run and see what happens well nothing runs because we only had a choice for Natalie and Ashley 
Well, there are a lot of names that people can enter that probably aren't going to be in this list. And probably, you know, names that are one of a kind no one ever heard of. So if you want to give your switch a default statement that says, all right, I'm going to first go through my list of all my options. And if I can't find a match, then I'm just going to give you a default answer. So in order to give a default answer, here's what you do. D E F A U L T and notice that we don't write anything in here because there is no like answer or value for default it's the default it's basically if you got to this and it didn't work and this it didn't work then I'm gonna go here to default so if all of your uh, pretty much your cases don't match then this is what you get so by default just go ahead and write something like um yeah I'm definitely copying this default write something like this is the default so check it out and another thing you don't need a break at the end of your default since it's the last choice so remember I said a break is pretty much to save you time saying alright once you found your answer then just break out of it and go continue with the next thing don't go through all the rest of the cases well you can add a break at the end of default but it would be worthless since when, if you get to the default you're already at the end and you already ran out of all your cases so what's the break out of it's not skipping over anything and it's not going to help you any to break out of it now you're already at the end so anyways that's why you don't need one so let's go ahead and test this variable Emily right now we have the variable Emily so what's going to happen is this JavaScript's going to say alright does Emily equal Natalie nope does Emily equal Ashley nope so I guess I'm just going to give you the default. This is your default statement. So go ahead and save this. And as you can see, this is default. So now let's go ahead and give it like Ashley, just like that. And now go ahead and save it. And it's going to say, all right, does Natalie equal Ashley? Nope. Does Ashley equal Ashley? Well, indeed it does. So I'm going to go ahead and print out this, just like he told me. And then I'm going to go ahead go 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 ahead and then I'm gonna go ahead and break so no need to even worry about this at all so let's go ahead and save it and check it out ooh fan of Twilight eh? Ashley Green not bad so that's the basics of a switch statement and how you can use a switch statement to save you from writing a whole bunch of ifs and this is actually a whole lot easier to maintain and uh, you know you can just look through your code and you know it's just a whole lot easier whenever we build programs that actually do something other than you know me talking about the girls I have a crush on um, that's what it does so anyways thank you guys for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video oh and Natalie Portman if you're watching call me